You know, ever since I was a child, I've always been very passionate about space. So I had the idea to make a short film that plays on the moon. And our problem is that we can't get to the moon. So we had to shoot everything in virtual production, which was the first time for us at such a scale. And oh boy, it wasn't easy. So virtual production basically means that the entire background or the location that you're shooting in is three-dimensional, is, is virtual. And we're gonna use Unreal Engine 5 for that. So we're gonna have to put up a green screen in the studio and put sand on the floor, that way I can interact with the floor as well. I'm gonna Google quickly how much sand you can actually transport safely. 1,200 kilos, which is about 2,600 pounds. When we got the sand to the studio, we had to immediately spread it out on the floor because the sand was really wet and it had to be dry because as far as I know, there's no water on the moon. Or at least not on the surface. Who knows, maybe there's something down there. The boss has to watch sometimes. Ideally, you would light out a green screen in two zones. So you have the green screen itself, which is going to get its own lighting. And basically in zone two, you're going to create a lighting of the environment itself. Come up one small step for the man. Okay, don't do this at home, guys. This is not how you should put up lights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't do that in your living room. <laughs> you always need to test your green screen, otherwise post-production will be quite hard. And this green screen, this one works. Now with virtual production, there is so much more than just a green screen. It's a very big technical challenge. I actually built my own cart on wheels, which starts with a very strong computer. Now it's powered by the MSI Supreme X4090 graphics card from Nvidia. That way we have no issues whatsoever to render real-time graphics at cinematic quality inside Unreal Engine. Now in that PC, we also have a capture card so that we can bring the video from the camera into the computer. There is the Vive Mars, which is going to take care of the whole tracking because every movement that you make with the real camera needs to translate as well to the virtual camera into Unreal Engine. And in order to keep everything synchronized, you need to have time code and gen lock. So that means a ton of cables that goes to the camera. So we're currently having some issues with gen lock as we're doing virtual production. So everything needs to be synced, but it's not working. And I don't know why. No! So this Genlog device basically works with a bunch of switches and the way you set those switches defines the frame rates that you're shooting with or the way that you synchronize everything. And there was a shard on the back of that Genlog device, but that wasn't the entire shard. You had to look that up online. Um, so yeah, we, we lost a lot of time with that. I ordered something very special, something that I always wanted to have as a child. And now I could finally order it because we're gonna make a short film with it. Houston! Houston! We have a problem, man! We have a problem, Houston! Actually, there was a big problem. So I bought a $3,000 spacesuit. Unfortunately, it doesn't look that well. So I still have a lot of work to do to make it look more premium. I did not expect that the suit was going to be that bad, especially the helmet. So I went online and I found this half ball of plexiglass and it fits in here perfectly and so I'm going to modify it so that the helmet looks better. I had planned to do a lot of tests during the pre-production because of the technical challenge, but uh, we were not able to do many tests. There we go, I fixed it. I said, there we go, I fixed it. So normally your spacesuit is blown up because of the oxygen. I don't have a real spacesuit, so uh, I've actually got a bunch of bubble wrap inside, which is going to make myself a little bit more puffy. This is actually insulation, so it's going to be super hot. <laughs> but it's good because it's cold here. <sighs> Oh, 
that suit was a big problem, and I knew that we were gonna lose a ton of time with that. And we didn't do enough tests, so it kind of felt like stepping into unknown territory. This is the first day of production, and I am pumped to get started. <laughs> It was a big challenge doing our first real virtual production, <laughs> but things started out pretty good. It takes three hours to put on this suit, and I can't stay in it longer than 10 minutes, so that's a big problem. The lunar surface is hard, guys. So this is the scene where we are going to mimic that I'm going to rotate around. Now to fake that, we're going to use two Rotolite AOS 2 lights. And the idea is that two guys are going to swing them, making it appear like the sun is going around me in a circle. <laughs> His helmet has too many reflections, so we can see ourselves and the camera in his helmet. Probably because we couldn't do enough tests, we didn't foresee the reflections on my helmet. Uh, but we did find a solution on the spot, and that was to either bring the camera as far away as possible from me, so shooting on tele lenses, or working with clots, either black clots, or working with a clot that we apparently had laying around that resembles the surface of the moon. Today is the day of the big stunt, and uh, although we practiced it, we never did with the suit. So I really hope that things go well, and I'm not going to rip the suit or break my helmet or anything of that. I'm super scared right now. It does not feel good. It doesn't feel right. Everything is wrong about yes. this. I was pretty scared, yeah. Once you're up there in that suit, uh, but it turned out good. I mean, we're professionals. We're, we're clumsy, but we're, we're clumsy professionals. <laughs> okay. We're losing so much time constantly because of the DMX. I have no idea what's going on. DMX is basically a way to control your lights remotely. Uh, we are using an iPad for that. But for some reason, the DMX just kept failing, and we had no clue what causes it. We are absolutely not on schedule. I was hoping to finish the entire short film today, but we still need to make like 14 or 15 shots, and I don't see that happening anytime soon. Eventually, we fixed it by just turning off DMX and working manually. We're done shooting on the green screen. Now we're going to do some motion capture. So we're currently working with Move AI, which uses a couple of iPhones to record the motion of me. So we're doing another stunt. I have to float in the air. So uh, again, I'm hanging from the ceiling. The motion capture went really good, and we were able to immediately see the results. Again, this was all in real time in the highest possible quality, thanks to that amazing graphics card we have in the computer. I had planned to shoot for three days, which eventually became five days, so we were already way behind schedule, but we did finish the short film, which I was very happy about, and then all of a sudden, just worst case scenario happens. So apparently, all the shots did not track, and apparently nothing has been recorded correctly in Unreal, and now it's constantly crashing. So we're probably looking at reshooting everything. You know, maybe that's a good advice. If you're starting with something completely new, like virtual production, which comes with so many technical challenges, don't do it on a big project for the first time. There are so many things that could go wrong. Even one small setting could ruin your entire shoot. We were very lucky because it was just one checkbox that we forgot to check before playback. <laughs> Everything was recorded correctly. <laughs> I gotta admit that moment was scarier than those stunts. Now I want to thank all of the partners who made this project possible, definitely MSI and their Supreme X graphics card. And now it's up to us to start editing. I'm hoping to release the short film in about a month. Uh, the best way to not miss the release of that is by signing up to our newsletter. You can find the link to it in the description down below. And if you would like to learn how to start your own virtual production, well, you can check out the video here on my left, guys, and we shall share all the nitty-gritty details. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay creative.